We want our students to become that creative thinker, that adaptive planner, that decisive decision maker that will, will either advise a strategic leader or eventually become a strategic leader. The United States Army War College Distance Education Program is a two-year combined online and resident phase program. It consists of 10 core courses, an elective, and a project that you may complete in lieu of that elective. The program itself is very challenging, but it's very rewarding. It allows the student to complete not only their senior service college education, but also receive joint professional military education too, if you're chosen in that program, and you will receive a, an accredited Master's of Strategic Studies at the same time. So all in all, a complete package for whether it's a senior military official, a civilian, or an international fellow. The purpose of the orientation program is to introduce students to our curriculum, uh, to offer them a um, chance to uh, learn the expectations that we have over, for them over the two-year period and to set them up for success in their studies. Time management is crucial for the student because many of them have uh, additional duties, a full-time job, uh, plus their reserve or National Guard duties in addition to becoming an, a War College student. Um, they're also active in the community and all those things keep on going and so they need to figure out how the War College studies are going to fit into their lives. After they go through the orientation program, we hope that they take away um, knowledge of the resources available here at the War College, um, that they can pick up the phone and access their faculty instructor, that they can access library uh, and whatever they need um, for their success. Uh, we also offer um, a good host of tech support services um, since many of these students are doing their studies online um, and uh, through our resident programs we hope that they uh, gain the human experience of knowing that you know we're here for them to help them and assist them in their learning. The distance program is charged to achieve the same outcomes that the resident program uh, undertakes and so strategic leadership is a, is a fundamental course. There is a strategic leadership course in the resident program as well. It's the first course in our program because of the concepts that we introduce in the course are really the main building block for subsequent courses. Critical thinking, systems thinking, creative thinking, ethics, civil military relations, the joint interagency multinational environment that strategic leaders work in. All of these are themes introduced in our course that are built upon in subsequent courses. My course tries to address the, uh, the development or strategy formulation uh, for our students. So one of the golden threads in our curriculum is our students should be able to uh, develop national strategy, analyze national strategy, and implement na national strategy and policy. And we teach them some additional analytical frameworks using international relations theory to try and make sense of how the world works, what's the role of the United States, what are our interests, and how do we pursue them. And then we examine the different instruments of national power to develop and uh, formulate a national s security strategy where that sets the students up for success in war and military strategy. What we do is broken into three blocks and the first block is uh, the classical military theorists of war and strategy. We go into block two which is a very um, extensive World War II case study in allied strategy development uh, primarily in the European theater. So what I have the students do there is take what they've learned in the first block and apply it to this case study of strategy formulation in the second block. And then finally in the third block, it's, uh, we get into uh, some, of the, some of the challenges that students will face as they continue on in their, in their military careers or, or just as national security professionals with my, with my civilian students. I always go back to the four learning outcomes and uh, you know, one of the first ones is to have the students evaluate various global trends within the context of globalization. Uh, a second uh, uh, requirement or outcome that we look for the students to do is to assess the relevance of various strategic challenges to U.S. interests. And then uh, the last two really come down to a regional focus where students will be required to assess U.S. interests within a particular region of the world. We have one of six geographical regions that they get to choose. 
And then the last outcome comes back to them synthesizing the historical, cultural, political, economic, as well as the security concerns uh, with respect to those interests. Our content takes uh, the previous courses uh, uh, from uh, first year and we, we roll them into uh, one, uh, one course. Uh, students have the opportunity to work in a classroom setting with uh, 16 to 18 other students. Uh, they have uh, several speakers that come in and speak about economics, information, uh, general uh, strategy, and uh, they have an opportunity to go to uh, Antietam Battlefield. They have the opportunity to go to uh, Washington, D.C. to visit an embassy or to visit another organization within the federal government. And uh, they get to take, take all the material that they learned online and, uh, and uh, discuss that with their fellow students, really summarize their whole year. This course serves as a bridge from the first year to the second year. Contemporary security issues, uh, that's broken down into three different blocks. Global Defense Trends studies the implications of the U.S. national security and military trends that will impact the future of warfare and the implications of those impacts for defense planners. Warfare in the 21st century is going to study numerous contemporary issues such as globalization, asymmetric, irregular warfare, mega cities, multi-domain operations, and many others, and the impacts on uh, warfare. The transition to Joint Force 2025 and Army 2030 takes a brief look at the Army's efforts to ensure readiness of the future force. How we manage the force, how we build the force, uh, and where we go is we start with high level, we start with national security strategy, national defense strategy, national military strategy. And then we take that and then we go down to the joint process, um, joint planning process. Uh, and then we look at acquisitions, we look at the budget aspect of things too. So, so the, the, the course then encapsulates almost how the military runs and how we get our congressional funding uh, and how that then in turn translates to what our requirements are. Uh, in terms of what the national security strategy says we should be doing as a military force and then how that translates actually into force structure. It's a lot of reading, uh, a lot of joint publications, uh, the Department of Defense publications. Uh, we try to spruce it up with a couple of videos um, that even some of the faculty members here have put together so that adds a little bit more to it uh, just to have some more relevance. Everything is used uh, through Blackboard. Uh, all our course content goes there. Uh, and the course content could either be videos, readings, uh, and we also do uh, collaborate sessions where that's a little bit more of a live, real-time interaction with the students. Jeff and I author uh, DE 2309-2319. It's theater security, uh, or excuse me, theater strategy campaigning one. Um, and what we do is uh, we take the students, uh, we start them out uh, with a study of the domains. Uh, we give them a picture of uh, all the different domains uh, of warfare and then from there we go into uh, the joint functions. My commitment to the course is obviously and what I bring to it is a maritime aspect. Uh, being a naval aviator and uh, being in the Navy obviously I, I give a flavor that joint flavor and that maritime uh, uh, you know aspect to the course and uh, kind of give a, a, a different viewpoint. The commitment that I provide to it is I've had a lot of experience in the interagency working at the Department of State and then with a lot of combatant commands uh, in my past, uh, specifically deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan uh, at, the, at the core and above level uh, in, in Afghanistan and also in Iraq, but then also down at the, um, the level of uh, within a squadron, within a CAV squadron, actual operations on the ground. So that's been my commitment to it. I've, I also have a background uh, as a planner, uh, a joint planner, uh, graduated from SAMS uh, as well. So together we kind of have built this course to really look at, you know, the strategy, theater strategy, campaigning, uh, and our experience together really has built this, uh, this course for DDE. So the first block we started talking about civilian control of the military, kind of going back to Clausewitz how uh, we take policy and turn that into strategy and then operations and then we transition into things like assessments, center of gravity, uh, finally we move on to talking some about risk before moving on to block two and block two is an Iraq case study where they analyze the 2003 invasion of Iraq and then the reframing that took place in 2006-2007 where we transitioned to the surge 
and uh, the change from focus on building capacity in the Iraqi government to protecting the Iraqi people and the success in bringing the violence down after that. Block three is uh, a um, kind of a capstone exercise. So we actually use a joint planning process to plan a operation in the South China Sea. This course offers a wide range of opportunities for students and for the instructors to delve into the heart of strategic thinking and strategic leadership. What we're doing is we're taking to, we're pulling together all the courses they've taken over the last two years and we're doing it in a format that's comprised of lectures and seminars in order for the students to synthesize all of their learning up to, the, uh, up to this point. The content is based on strategy and strategic leadership. I've put together a guest speaker list that is phenomenal. There are four-star or four-star equivalent speakers. They're, they're top in their field. And we have nine Bliss Hall main platform speakers that speak to, to the entire class. That's 372 students and faculty members. And what we do is make sure that they're focused on strategic leadership in their arena, whether it's, you know, uh, information, it's uh, combatant command responsibilities, or uh, something else that's of, of interest to the students like counterterrorism, homeland defense, homeland security. And with those nine platform speakers, we build off of that and we have 15 different noontime lecture speakers so that we pull together all of the different pieces that the students have learned over the last couple of years and really help develop their ability to think strategically, to think broadly, to become better senior leaders. It's the final course of the DDE program. It's a culmination course and it's where we pull all the pieces together for our students and then they finally graduate at the end of my course.